Okay guys, it's time for some big block power. Let's start with a mile 454 built for towing. Then we'll step up to a 496 with aluminum heads and a bigger cam. Then we'll finish things off with an even wilder 496 with airflow research heads and a tunnel ram. Hello everybody, I'm Rich Holder and as always, welcome to the channel. Today the question is, you got a big block Chevy and we got a mild combination built for a dedicated application, but then as always, what happens and how do you make it even better? Well, you start off first by making it bigger, then you make it better with different heads and different cam and different intake manifold, but then how do you make it even better? How about a different set of heads and a different cam and then three different intakes? What happened? Let's check it out. Okay, guys, let's jump right in. We're going to talk about what happened when I built a 454, uh, ostensibly to use as a tow vehicle for a crew cab dually that I had. But then what happens when we, you know, start getting more adventurous with our power output and stepping up from a 454 to a 496 and then to a 496 and the second 496 is in air quotes because it's something where we you know stepped up in camshaft and cylinder head and different kinds of intake manifolds to make even more and more power and this will show you what happens when you start out mild and you end up kind of getting wild and you know kind of how much power is available but our the, our starting motor was basically a rebuilt 454. This was a Mark IV motor, so an early one, not a Gen 5 or a Gen 6. This one, as I said, was in a 77 uh, crew cab dually that we used for towing. And what I wanted to do was basically just kind of do a rebuild on the 454 and get it to make more power and more usable power for what we were using it for. In this case, it was just used for towing. And it's important to keep in mind, this thing had a turbo 400 in it and a four series rear end. So it was not an overdrive. So we were running at a little bit more RPM, like cruising down the road you know, than, we, when you, than you might, had we had a good like overdrive transmission, which certainly would have helped fuel mileage. But what I did was we took the 454, <coughs> excuse me, we rebuilt it and we put uh, forged rods and pistons in it. And the reason that I wanted to put pistons in it was two things. One, I wanted to raise the static compression up a little bit because it originally had a flat top piston and we put a dome piston in it. So we got compression up to near 10 to 1, you know, 9.7, 9.8 to 1, which was good. And then obviously having a forged piston in it allowed us later on, we would be running this motor with a blower. So in part two, we're going to cover what happened when we ran all these combinations with superchargers. But we put a set of ported 049 oval port heads on it which worked very well. But um, because we were using this like as a daily driver slash towing vehicle, we put a small camshaft in it. It was a crane cam, a sub 500 lift, a 203, 212 of 50, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. And then I topped that off with a Performer 2.0 aluminum four barrel intake manifold, and then a 750 Holly. We ran on the dyno, we ran hooker super comp headers, they were inch and seven eighths. And then naturally we adjust the jetting and the timing. And here's what we came up with. This combination produced 438 horsepower. So really not even one horsepower per cubic inch, but on torque production, it did very well, especially in the RPM range where we would be using at 540 foot pounds of torque. So it may in fact 541. And had we revved it lower than this or started our load lower than this, we certainly would have had a good torque curve, which is exactly what this thing delivered and exactly what we wanted. But <laughs> naturally, there was even more power to be had. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we went from this mild 454 to a 496. Okay, now we've taken a look at the buildup of the very mild 454 used for towing on the 77 Dually. Here's what happened when we decided to step things up. And again, we're going to cover this in part two when we ran blowers on everything because everything was run with boost as it should be. But our 454 made 438 horsepower and did good on torque production, as we said, you know, 540 foot pounds or so. But here's what happened when we installed a 496. So, at, you know, as expected, a 496 being bigger right off the bat is going to, you know, bigger is better. So it's definitely going to make more power. It's certainly going to make more torque, which it did. But on this 496, we did change a couple of things. So one thing that we did, obviously, is change the displacement. We um, bored this thing 60 over. We put the 4250 stroke crank in it. But we also lowered the compression on this thing. So if we take a look at our description here. 
We and we put a bigger camshaft in it. We put different cylinder heads on it, all in an effort to make this thing, you know, basically make more average power. What I was figuring is, hey, we put a bigger motor in, so we're going to have as much torque as as the um, you know, kind of mild performance 454 did, even though we lowered the compression. But we could put more camshaft in this, put more cylinder head in it, and then also make more peak power. And that's exactly what happened. So what we did was we made this an eight and a quarter to one motor, mostly because we were thinking that this thing was going to get, you know, lots of boost run on it. And we did run this thing with lots of different combinations and lots of different boosts from a lots of different size blowers. The 496 was a uh, low compression 496 was equipped with a uh, hydraulic roller camshaft, 646, 623 lift, a 236, 242 at 50, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. We ran this thing with slightly larger headers, and the headers were connected to a set of unported ASCAS Canfield 317 aluminum heads. We also replaced the Performer 2.0 with a Performer RPM air gap, you know, as you should. And we ran this thing actually on the dyno with a 950 uh, HP Holley carburetor. Same, uh, we had an MSD distributor obviously with the proper gear on it. And after tuning, we got some pretty good power with our dual plane. Made 565 horsepower, 581 foot-pounds of torque. But we did an interesting test on this thing. We actually, because this thing had a dual plane RPM air gap manifold on it, I decided to try a carb spacer on this. And what we did was put like a half inch open spacer on this. Here's what happened when we put the spacer on it. Not surprisingly, it, uh, <coughs> excuse me, did exactly what spacers tend to do, uh, especially on a dual plane. It made more power on the top. In fact, it made more power from about 4,000 RPM all the way out to 6,000. The peak power is now up to 577. Peak torque was actually up as well, 592 foot-pounds of torque. And you can see if we look down low below 4,000 RPM, we would have traded a little bit of power, a little bit of torque down in that range because of the spacer. But if you're running this at the drag strip, Hey, plop on the spacer, get a little, bit, a little bit of extra power, and probably would do better at the track with that. If you're driving it on the street, I might opt for not having the spacer. Also, the spacer and the intake manifold combination would also come down to hood clearance. So if you've got a truck like we did, that stuff all might fit. But on a low-profile Camaro or Chevelle or that kind of thing, maybe you won't have the option with that intake and a spacer. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we took this 496 short block and step things up even further. Okay guys, let's take a look. We got a little bit more serious with our 496 buildup. We replaced the head cam and ran through really a trio of three different intake manifolds, but we did retain our 496 short block, meaning it had four draws and four pistons. It had our SCAT uh, 4250 stroker crank and it was bored 60 over. It was low compression though, still eight and a quarter to one. We were thinking, you know, later on, hey, we're going to add a bunch of boosts and this thing might be good for a boat application, let's say. But what we did was uh, change the camshaft and the cylinder heads, and then we ran three different intake manifolds. So what we did in terms of the camshaft, we went from our Canfield headed version, which was the 315 unported ASCAS Canfields, our, our RPM air gap, our 950 Holley, and then a 236, 242 646, 623, 114 hydraulic roller cam. And then we installed, I'll go ahead and show you what happened to our power output when we made our modifications. So this is the AFR headed version. What we did was install a bigger a solid roller cam jet, although it's still kind of a street roller that compels it a marine roller. And this is their XE300BR-14, which is 652 lift. So not a whole bunch more lift than the cam we had in it, but a good, good bit more duration. 255, 262 at 50, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. As before, we had uh, aluminum roller rockers on it. We did change the cylinder heads. We stepped up from the 315 Canfield heads, which were still good, to an Airflow Research set of 315 heads. We retain the Performer RPM air gap intake manifold and the 950 Holley and the MSD distributor. We ran with two and eight, uh, two and an eighth inch hooker, you know, long tube dyno headers. And that combination produced a peak of 626 horsepower compared to 565 with the previous combination. Torque was a little bit higher on the previous combination, you know, 580 something foot pounds. 
versus 578 foot pounds. But, <coughs> excuse me, we weren't done there. What we did is thinking, hey, this motor is now has enough cylinder head on it and enough camshaft. What it needs now is really more intake manifold. So what we did was replace the RPM air gap intake manifold with a Victor Jr., a 454R intake manifold. And that did what we have come to expect. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our uh, Canfield headed version so we can kind of see directly what the difference is between a single plane and a dual plane manifold. And in typical fashion for those two manifolds, the single plane lost power to the dual plane all the way out to 4,500. And by as much as 528 foot-pounds versus 566 foot-pounds, so nearly 40 foot-pounds of torque, but did make more peak power, 650 horsepower, and made more power of the single plane compared to the dual plane, made more power from about 4,800 on up. So it did well. And here is our final test on this. We ran a tunnel ram. This was a YN tunnel ram, you know, just kind of <laughs> your run of the mill tunnel ram. We ran two, uh, I think that there were 750 carburetors on here. Yeah, two 750 tunnel ram carburetors. And the com with the tunnel ram and the carburetors, once everything was tuned, 687 horsepower. Peak torque was also way up because this the, the tunnel ram made more power than either one of these from about 4,400 on up. We didn't load it down at 3,000, but it made more torque, you know, through most of the usable power curve, 618 foot-pounds of torque. So it did very well. Um, we also tried running two different set of airflow research heads on this. We tried 315s and 335s, and really there was no difference in power between those two heads. They had the same uh, combustion chambers on them. And because the 315 heads already flowed more than enough to support this power level, we just didn't see a big jump in power. But now stay tuned for part two, which will come up next. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to show you what happened when we ran boost on all of these combos. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.